Welcome to the Bigger Pockets Business Podcast, show number 22. Welcome to a real world MBA from the School of Hard Knocks, where entrepreneurs reveal what it really takes to make it. Whether you're already in business or you're on your way there, this show is for you. This is Bigger Pockets Business. Hey there, everybody. I am Jay Scott. I am your co-host for the Bigger Pockets Business Podcast here again this week with my lovely co-host, Mrs. Carol Scott. How are you doing today, Carol? Oh, so great. Thank you, baby. Guess what? Before we get into today's show, I just want to thank everybody again. Listeners, thank you so, so much to all of you who took the time to fill out our listener survey. We learned a ton, a ton about what you like, don't like, what you want, and so on and so forth. And one big thing that we learned is that a lot of you are Bigger Pockets members and are at least somewhat involved in real estate investing. So before we get to today's show, we just wanted to give you a heads up about a new and free tool. Yep, that's right. It's free to help you reach your goals. It's called the Firestarter. Cool name, right? The Firestarter. And if you plan on becoming financially free, it's an amazing tool that tracks your progress and helps you just hold yourself accountable for what you're doing and gets you toward financial freedom. So you remember a few weeks ago when we had Brandon Turner on the show and he talked about 90 day goals. Well, guess what? The fire starter helps you reach your 90 day goal by writing down the daily habits that are going to set you right up for success. So if you want to check this out, here's what you need to do. Go right into your bigger pockets account, go to your dashboard, my goals. And under there, you're going to find the fire starter tool. And again, it is completely free. It's right in your dashboard under my goals. Look for the fire starter tool. It's free. It's awesome. And you're going to love it. So go check it out now. That is awesome. So I want to jump right into today's show because we have a really, really awesome show today. We have a guy on named Josh Elledge. Josh is the founder of a company called upmyinfluence.com and their stated goal is to democratize access to influence. And basically what that means is that Josh helps us entrepreneurs leverage media exposure to attract the perfect audiences for our businesses and to grow our brands. And he does it all without the exorbitant costs of traditional PR firms. So basically for anybody that, that wants to build credibility through media exposure, Josh is the guy. And on the show today, he tells us all about how he grew his last business to over $6 million in sales and spending less than $500 total on advertising. And he tells us how we can do the same thing in our business. He gives us some amazing tips on how we can use media to grow our reach, um, how we can use the idea of giving value to build trust and credibility with our audiences. And finally, he gives us some really concrete tips on how we can start gaining media exposure without spending a fortune on traditional PR firms. It is an awesome episode. Now, if you want more information about Josh, more information about the things we talk about on the show, don't forget to check out our show notes at biggerpockets.com slash bizshow22. That's biggerpockets.com slash bizshow22. Okay, now without any further ado, let's jump right in and welcome Josh Elledge to the show. Josh Elledge, welcome to the show. Jay, thank you so much for having me. I am so excited. I finally made it to Bigger Pockets. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just as excited to have you. So thank you for joining us. We're so excited to talk with you. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, we, we met John uh, for the first time at a podcast conference just uh, about a month, month and a half ago. And so we've been really excited after we heard about what you're doing for the entrepreneur community. We've been really excited to talk to you uh, and get you on the show basically to give our listeners some of your valuable advice and to tell them a lot about uh, your business, which is called Up My Influence. Now, before we jump into Up My Influence, which is an awesome business that helps entrepreneurs basically gain recognition, gain credibility, gain trust through media exposure. Yeah. I'd like to hear a little bit more about your backstory and how Up My Influence basically evolved. What is your story? Where, where, did, where did this company come from? 
You know, like a lot of other entrepreneurs, I'd failed in business a number of times. And so, in fact, uh, six times uh, to be specific. And those failures included uh, personal bankruptcy. Uh, I, I lost a home to foreclosure, uh, lost another home in a short sale. So, didn't have a very good track record. <laughs> but I kept at it uh, because any time that I worked a regular corporate job, I was just, I it just, I just knew I was in the wrong place. Uh, even though I had some a couple of pretty good jobs, uh, it, it just didn't feel right. And so I kept at it. And sure enough, on my seventh business venture, I had learned enough in those previous six businesses so that I knew what I needed to do in order to succeed. And I honestly, I don't know that it was so much about the business idea uh, as it was, I was the right person now to lead that company. And I had let go of, of a lot of the fear or um, you know personal shortcomings that I, I had uh, during my previous six ventures. And so that business was Savings Angel. And I launched that 12 years ago. And uh, it was just a membership-based website. And we would help consumers cut their grocery bill in half. We were very successful uh, in terms of the product. But Jay and Carol, I mean, you guys know, I mean, you could have the best thing in the world, the best service, the best product in the world. If you don't have visibility, if people don't know about it, you're not going to be in business very long. Word of mouth is great, but it's generally not enough to carry a, a business. And so, uh, so what I did is at the beginning when I launched Savings Age, I had no money for advertising. So I just reached out to local radio stations, local TV stations, local newspapers, magazines, uh, bloggers at the time, I mean, anyone I could who had an audience. And I said, you know, could I be of service? Uh, you know, I figured out a way to cut your grocery bill in half. It involves, you know, timing your, uh, your store sales with coupons. And so I'd explain how to get free stuff every single week. And so I, I began this regular segment and that's what I did for advertising. And the cool thing is, is it didn't cost me anything. I just had to provide really, really good value. And sure enough, like that first radio segment I did, uh, we made over $300 uh, month. We started at $300 a month uh, recurring revenue. And that $300, Jay, that was enough to pay my heating bill. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is incredible. I need to keep doing more of this. And so, you know, flash forward many years later, and I've been a syndicated newspaper columnist now for nine and a half years. I've been on TV uh, probably close to a thousand times alone, just in TV, most of them as a local consumer guy for three different TV stations here in Orlando, Florida. And then, um, syndicated radio, uh, and uh, yeah, all told over 2,000 media appearances, and that allowed us to earn more than $6 million in revenue, and this is the crazy thing, and, and most people can't, don't even believe this. We've spent less than $500 in advertising. We just, we never had to do paid ads. I mean, everything we do is just going out and providing value. It's a little bit more of a longer play, um, but it's worked out very, very well for us. That is awesome. I love that story. So when you decided with Savings Angel um, to start going after free media, was that a strategy? Did you, sit, did you sit down and say, okay, this is how I'm going to build this business? Or did it just happen serendipitously? And then afterwards you said, hey, wait a second, this is working. I need to keep doing this. What was the thought process there? You know, it was kind of like the scene in an officer and a gentleman, I got nowhere else to go. You know, like <laughs> I didn't have any choice. Like, you know, what do you do? Like it was either that or like, print out flyers and start stapling them to telephone poles or something. I just, I had nothing else. I mean, social media really at the time was still kind of in its infancy. You know, Facebook just became a, a thing. Uh, and so that was my only option. And, uh, and, and it was great because it just, it ended up working out pretty well, but yeah, no, it was completely unintentional. I did, I had no uh, plans on becoming the coupon guy, right? <laughs> or the, you know, the money saving guy, but it's cool because today, you know, now I have this persona, you know, I'm known as the guy that can get you a, a deal hookup or upgrade on anything in life. So I'm, I'm really fun at parties. <laughs> that, that that's awesome, and I I think a big and we we talked a little bit about this a podcast cast movement, and I know you're big on this whole idea of giving value, and so it's not just about getting your name out there, it's not just no. about getting media appearances, it's not just about selling, selling, selling. 
your whole view on how to convert potential customers to customers um, is bigger than that, correct? Yeah, truly. Uh, and, and if you look at how consumer behavior has changed, so I've been studying and leading consumer behavior for over 12 years now. And one thing that, I mean, you know, really what my thing with consumers is, um, you know, is before you buy anything, before you sign anything, before you engage in any product, just look it up. Like do a little bit of research until you feel like you got your questions answered. Don't ever rely on marketing or advertising alone to make your buying decisions. And uh, sure enough, uh, that's exactly what consumers have been doing. So now, because we can, uh, you, know, you know, before we buy a car, before we buy a property, we want to learn about the, the school system. We want to get to know, you know, what do people think about the neighborhood, you know, uh, before we buy even a box of cereal, we can read reviews on that stuff to see what people think. And so people are looking for reviews. They're looking for user-generated content. They're looking for social proof. They uh, are curious uh, what other influential people are saying about them. What is the media saying about that? You know, this third-party validation means so much more today than traditional advertising. You know, one book I commonly quote is uh, Mark Schaefer's uh, Marketing Rebellion, which came out at the beginning of this year. One of the most important books in marketing. Uh, and you, you just need to understand that, you know, we are past the day of, you know, where you could just put like, a, you know, if you're a digital marketer, well, I'm one funnel away. And so I'm just going to put a sales page up on the internet and then I'm going to drive a bunch of traffic to it and I'm going to make my riches. That is really, really hard to do. You got to spend a lot of money in order to do that. And so I say it works, but it works about as well as uh, being a spammer or a catfisher or, you know, so it's like a certain percentage of people will still uh, fall for that. Uh, but that number is getting so tiny now. And the reason is consumers have never been wiser. And I think this is really, really great news. If you, you're an honest business person, you run an honest business, like you, your, your intention your purpose is to do good in the world and provide value. There's never been a better time for you today because guess what? People are going to find that out. They're going to find that out good or bad. And you got to be a giver. Uh, I just had a conversation with one person yesterday and I was just shocked that these people still exist. Uh, but he wanted to, on my own podcast, uh, he wanted to talk about, you know, how you could write a book in 24 hours. I said, that's great. Let's talk about that. He goes, oh, no, no, I can't tell people all the secrets. Then people won't buy my $300 package. I'm like, <laughs> and yeah, listen, brother, you are in the wrong room. <laughs> right? Seriously, you're preaching to the wrong choir for sure. Yeah, you're right. So, seriously, all over the place there. So let's say we've got so many new entrepreneurs, Josh, listening to this show, right? And it sounds like back in the day, you reached your success by just, you hit the ground running, right? You went out to these radio shows. You went yeah. out to newspapers, you went to these grocery stores, whatever, and said, how can I provide value? How can I uh, give back and just let people learn about me and how can I be uh, helpful to you? Now that everything, not everything has changed. Some of those things clearly still exist, but now that so much is online, what tips, what tips can you give these new entrepreneurs to get into these spaces online? And, and actually, before we go there, what are some of these spaces online? Like podcasting, that's a great example oh, of gosh, one, yes. right? So what are some of the other online avenues where new entrepreneurs can look for opportunities to spread their value, to spread, to spread their message, to become influential? Right. And so when you're beginning, it may be really tempting to go for the biggest shows on the planet, the biggest influencers in the planet and say, hey, pick me, pick me. You know, uh, we, especially as Americans, like we, we have this rags to riches um, dream, this fantasy where, where we think, oh my gosh, if only Oprah, you know, would just call me, all my wildest dreams would come true or whoever, right? Um, and that just doesn't really happen um, because at the same time that, that you want to work with uh, some of the biggest names in your field, so does everybody else. And guess what? I, I mean, I can speak as a, as a journalist, as a pretty big platform. I've been you know, writing for uh, 11 newspapers now for nine and a half years. I get bad pitches every day and they all end up in the garbage can. And it's, it's because that 
most people reaching out, they do this all wrong. Or even if you spend a lot of money, hire a PR firm, guess what? PR firms do it all wrong as well. It, it blows me away how much money people will spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to a PR firm. PR firms today, most of them are just glorified spammers. They're just trying to push their client's story. And as a journalist, it's not my job. It's not my job to promote your client. And so, if you want to win, then what I would recommend is two things. Number one is that, and we'll really go, I hope we get to go into this a little bit in depth, and that is, um, you know, really focus on building your authority. Your online authority, your branding really makes a big difference because, uh, you know, with even something as simple as your headshot, you know, your, your profile, uh, if we go to Twitter and we, you know, we look you up, you know, we're, people are going to make very superficial judgments based on what you're showing them. Uh, you know, Carol, we live in a swipe left, swipe right world. Everything is so instant. It's very superficial, but uh, it's interesting as consumers, we all believe that we all have this supernatural ability to read people very, very quickly. And we do. Um, is, it, is it based on, you know, you know, truly what's in someone's heart? No, not at all. And so that's why it's really important that, you know, if, you know, just like an online dating, I mean, if you're going to be doing online dating, you better have a really good profile. Otherwise, you know, it's you're not going to attract a whole lot. <laughs> so same thing, social media profile, uh, building up your social proof, which that's going to take time. That's okay. Uh, you know, building up your associations and then trying to communicate evidence of your success or that you're doing things. Um, these are all things that you want to convey. You will never attract a client that exceeds your level of branding. So if you're at a, on a scale from one to 10, you're a three. I'm sorry, but the four, five, six isn't above. They're they're just going to be like, hey, great for you, but I'm really kind of looking for someone that is at a six. And you're not there yet. No offense. You're just newer in business. Um, and this, so influencers will do the same thing. Media will do the same thing. Uh, they need credible experts. Uh, but again, they're going to be looking for people that they're used to working. And so that's why it's really important that you invest in things like having a press kit, you know, building up your LinkedIn profile, uh, you know, making sure that, you know, you really fill out your bio section. You, you write a compelling bio uh, that's going to get people's attention. Um, you know, and you can only work with what you have. So, um, you know, if you're a little bit goofy, like looking like me, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Um, so just, you know, work with the best photographer you can afford. Uh, and you know, the, they might have to, you know, uh, touch up a couple things, but, um, yeah, that's, that's all part of it. Um, and that can really mean a difference. And then, you know, really the next step is rather than reaching out to the big dogs, you know, start with the people that, um, you know, that have smaller shows and, and refine your message, refine your storytelling, you refine your stage presence and you do this over and over and over again. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's taken me 180, uh, podcast interviews to finally make it to bigger pockets. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. We, we are the I, ones really, that are honored to have you. You, you got to earn your way to the top. So sometimes it will, we'll get people that will approach us and they'll say, hey, can you get me connected with Gary V? Can you get me on the Today Show? And the answer is yes, but based on looking at your current branding and you know, the evidence of, of your success, it's going to take a few years. Um, so if you're patient, we can do that. Um, and you also have to earn your way to the top. So start small. If you want to get on the Today Show, they're not going to work with you until you've done other national media. Other national media is not going to work with you until you've done big market media. Big market media is not going to work with you until you've done medium, uh, you know, medium media markets. So you, you just have to earn your way there. And you honestly, listen, you know, Gary V's guests, they all started somewhere. So if they can do it, you can do it. So, you know, it's, it's just that kind of a thing. Earn your way there. That's a great tip for our listeners to remember, right? No matter if you're just brand new, there's someone else with a podcast that's brand new. There's somebody else with some type of blog that's brand new that needs that content, that needs that expertise, that is happy yeah. to give you that exposure because they want new and interesting things as well, right? Yeah. So once we as new entrepreneurs go after all of these outlets online to begin building our credibility, to begin sharing our expertise, to begin giving. How do we go about 
converting that to business, right? So right. There's, there's, there's the concept of getting out there, getting in front of people, but how does that translate into bringing business into our company? Uh, I listen, I am so glad that you asked this question. And, you know, oftentimes when when we get clients to come and work with us, I mean, we're a completely different model than most PR firms. Most PR firms don't have a clue about how you monetize PR. Like they're good at just like, oh, we got you this visibility and, you know, we got you these number of eyeballs uh, and they, they don't really tie it to what really matters and what pays the bill and that's sales. So let's start here. There's media you do for visibility, and then there's media you do for authority. Most people will overestimate the value of visibility. They think, oh my gosh, if I could just get on that podcast, oh my gosh, if I could just get on that TV station or that influencer could celebrate me, uh, you know, I'm going to make tons of money. Most of the time, it's going to be pretty underwhelming. Like it's not going to be as great as you think, and that's okay because the visibility is just one of the areas in which you get value. And I would argue it's probably one of the, the lower levels. So what's more valuable than visibility? Well, number one is uh, the authority from now, if you had a story written about you in Forbes magazine or in Forbes.com, that's a logo now that you can use. That logo is going to improve your conversion rate. You can A-B test this. I've seen this consistently that, in, 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 that if you add a string of high authority logos to your lead capture page, your sales page, you know, whatever it is, it is going to improve it somewhere, sometimes usually between eight to 15%. That means eight to 15% more revenue. We like that. Next, you're going to get a relationship with an influencer. So let's say that you do the reporter a solid and you help them out with a story. And I've done this before where, you know, my first story with Lewis Bolden here in Orlando was on a, a Ford recall. I don't have anything to do with cars and Ford recalls or anything, but I did the story anyway. And I will almost, I will almost, I will drop just about anything I'm doing if a reporter contacts me and asks if I can help with a story, um, whether it's TV or whatever, giving a quote, whatever it is. Um, and so I did that story. Then I did a story on theme, tar theme park ticket prices. Again, not really in my wheelhouse, but now Lewis and I had worked together on two stories. He goes, Josh, tell me a little bit more about Savings Angel. So I told him a little bit about it. He's like, well, we should do a story about that. And I, Lewis, that's a great idea. <laughs> and so um, invest in relationships with, with influencers. Honestly, give them, val give them so much value first, help them out, do a solid for them, and don't ask for stuff in return. Like, and even like when you make a pitch, like you need to like make sure there is no, sales or marketing involved in that pitch because if they smell sales on your breath I mean they're gonna turn and run the other way uh, because it's like yeah, yeah, yeah you just want to use me uh, to get on the platform um, so there's that um, and then also um, you can once you have a working relationship let's say you do want to pitch something it's relevant it, you're newsjacking you know you're paying attention to what's going because you have a working relationship, it's going to be much easier for you to reach out and say, hey, would you be interested in doing a story about this? Uh, and your chance of getting a yes just went up by like <laughs> orders of magnitude. Uh, so that's also really critical. Um, I also find that it helps with um, shortening sales cycles. So right now, uh, if you're finding that there's a lot of frustration because people are just not pulling the trigger, it's because they don't feel like there's any, there, there, there might not be much momentum. And so they feel like, well, I can start with that anytime. And so if you consistently show them, oh, here I am an entrepreneur, oh, here I am in Barron's, oh, here I am in AB7, ABC7, and you keep showing this stuff, what's going to happen is they're going to get this FOMO is going to start building up and they'd be like, oh my gosh, you know, this gal is going to take off without me. I better get in while the getting's good. Otherwise, they're going to raise their rates or they're not going to have availability. Um, um, and so I find that it's really good for that as well. And again, you want to use that as like your follow-up sequence, you know, sharing all this evidence because third party validation beats conversation any day of the week. Let the media do your selling for you. That is That's awesome. Huge. I, I love that message. And so much of this resonates with me because, um, 
I feel like I didn't do this on purpose. I don't think Carol did this on purpose, but this is kind of how Carol and I have, have formed our brand over the last decade. Um, we spent five years writing about real estate and not no. selling anything. And we had a big blog and we got popular in bigger pockets. And before we knew it, I wrote a book and people wanted to buy it. And there are a million books out there on flipping houses. And, but for some reason people wanted to buy my book and it's because for years, many years I was giving value. People knew my name and I had built up that trust. I had built up that credibility. I had built up that, that reciprocity. I had given and given and given and people desire to give back. And for me, and this is, I'm actually leading to a question here. For me, the hard part was to go from building up all this goodwill, building up all this potential reciprocity to the point where I actually started asking people for money. And that yeah. for me was difficult because I had spent five, six years giving and giving and giving for free. I felt almost guilty to then start asking people for money. And so, and, and it's, it's now been a decade and I'm still having trouble getting over that hump of where I, I, I have trouble differentiating what I should be giving for free and what I should be asking people to pay for. Any yeah. advice there? Well, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we're having this conversation because th this is actually a pretty common thing. I went through this as well. And so here, here's the thing to remember. Um, it, it's, if we are simply responding to what people are asking for and there are some, there's, listen, when it comes to information, education, content, I pretty much give like 99.9% .9 of it away for free. Like the only stuff that I hold onto that might be like part of a package where my team is involved, we're providing services, obviously my team's not going to work for free. Um, but if your audience is saying, Jay, I want this, and you're like, okay, well, I could provide that and you know, maybe this I could do for free, but that, I mean, that's, you know, that's the kind of thing that, that, that people are saying that they'd be willing to pay money for. It's not our job to judge our audience. Like if they want to give you money for something, then, you know, it would be, it's audacious of us to say, um, that, that they shouldn't be willing to pay money for that thing. And so, um, you know, for me, it's a pretty clear differentiator. Um, I don't really sell e-courses. Like I bundle it in with some other services that we provide. Um, uh, but that's really not where we make our money. And honestly, I think the future, uh, is less about maybe like e-courses because we're, we live in an age of podcasts and videos, YouTube, where everything is pretty much free. I mean, it's, yeah, sure. It's nice when it's cataloged and it's indexed. There's a follow, you know, course, by, and there are some really great courses out there that, that you should spend money on and invest in. Uh, but by and large, like I think services, uh, you know, access, uh, paying for access. It's just, on, there's only one of you. There's only one of Carol. And so, um, you, you can't give it, you can't give your individual time away for free. Um, and so people will pay, uh, money, uh, they, they, they love to join your community, but people will pay for exclusivity. And so if you could provide that with small group coaching, or they could be part of a group where they get access to special Q and a trainings, that sort of thing. Um, that is extremely valuable. Uh, and so, yeah, I absolutely would, uh, you know, charge money for that and, and give them uh, you know, give them benefits that they just can't get otherwise. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, um, it, it's, it, I think it's the natural evolution and because it was challenging for you, that communicates to me, Jay, that, I mean, your heart's in the right place. It's wake up in the morning and ask yourself, how can I deliver the most amount of value today rather than waking up? And I know what it's like at the beginning because I've been there and trust me, I've failed at this so many times. And, and, and when you have a scarcity mentality and you're like, who am I going to sell to today? Where am I going to make the money? Man, people just feel it and it's really hard to shake. And I'll just tell you from an emotional and spiritual standpoint, it's really hard to grow a business when that's the primary question that you ask every day is how am I going to make more money? Flip that to how can I provide the most value? Do what you got to do to make the money. I mean, work extra hours, make, you know, work another business or job or something like that uh, to bring it in. Uh, but, but build your business with the, uh, you know, the intention of, uh, I am going to provide more value than anyone has ever given in this area. 
That's awesome. That's a, that's very much a go-giver type of mentality, right? Where it's yep. just like you give and give and give and that's give right. and give, and it's all going to come back to you in spades and you give more and more and more, and it's going to come back to you more and more and more. So that's, that's see- another author that that's another author, Bob Berg, I source very often. In fact, that's our whole, like when right now my company is doing more than 20 sales calls every single week and it's because, and it's so easy to generate leads when you can come up with an offer that is a no brainer for someone to say, um, yeah, I'd love to talk with you. Love to, you know, if you're willing to give something so valuable, uh, that that your, your perfect audience is clamoring over themselves to get on the phone with you, you know, you've kind of hit that go giver vibe just right. Very cool. I love it. Jay, go ahead. Awesome. Yeah. So I wanted to ask, um, I, I, again, I love that give value, give value, give value. Um, but for a lot of us, and I know a lot of people that have this problem that people that like to give value, love to give value, give lots of value. Eventually you're going to have those people that you realize aren't going to convert to customers. Um, but they've kind of gotten accustomed to you giving free value and they come back. And I find that there are 20% of the people out there or 5% of the people out there that are trying to suck up 95% of my time because well, they can't I've given so much of the past. How do you say no? How do you, how do you, how do you subtly say, look, at some point you have to start paying. I just don't have the time. Well, you, that's where you develop systems. And so, you know, in social media, you know, it's not expected, you know, you know, uh, you know, listen, I, I'm not going to be in my Facebook community very often answering questions personally, unless it's, you know, part of a premium thing, for example, like I'll respond with thank you. But honestly, like it's my team that's managing a lot of my social media. And so oftentimes they're writing as me. So, you know, cause I can't be in, in all places at once. Um, I, I just, so you just set up systems to say, listen, if you want this or that, um, that's what our small group is for. If you're not ready for that, that's great. That's awesome. That's what our, you know, my YouTube channel is all about. You know, that's what my podcasts are for. Like, I'm going to keep on bringing you so much value. Uh, but if you do want that next level, just know that we have a plan for you. Um, it's, com- and I said, listen, it's completely your call. You know, if you're not yet at the business, if you're not yet at the position budget wise, where you can make those investments, don't even worry about that. Maybe next year, um, you know, is going to be better timing for you. So I really just put it at, you know, I just say, you know, you're not engaging in the paid level. Uh, if, if you choose not to engage on a paid level, it's probably for budget reasons. And that's okay. Like I've been there. Like I'm going to keep on giving you tons of free stuff and you never have to give me a dime. And you know, if I can get them to be a fan and they can refer me to other people who do have a budget, cool. I'm happy to do that. Uh, but yeah, I don't have a problem with, I don't have a problem with people that I engage with for 20 years, never give me a dime. No, I don't have a problem with that at all. I'm just not, I can't spend That's my personal right. time there unless it's, you know, again, part of some sort of thing, you know, where, where I've, my team and I have set the rules. I just, I don't overextend myself. I can't. Awesome. I want to, take this in a, in a little bit different direction. So we, we've talked about value a bunch, but I know that you're big on media influence. I want to talk a little bit about um, what type of media influence we're trying to generate um, and just ask a couple questions around that. So I, I know in this business, when I say this business, we have a lot of real estate investors who yep. are listening and a lot of them, there are a lot of real estate gurus out there that kind of cultivate a personality that can be somewhat polarizing. And I know there are some brands out there that they're constantly trying to appeal to everybody. Their, their, right. message, their, their message is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, generic or just bland, um, not in a bad way, bland, um, but yeah. basically everybody's a potential customer and never be polarizing. And then there are other people that you see them in, in, in the media and they're very polarizing and it, they're, they're clearly trying to go after a very specific set of customers, even at the risk of insulting or putting off others. What's your yeah. view for people that are trying to get media exposure? Um, is there one way that's right and one way that's wrong? Does it depend on the business or the person? Yeah, if you want to be a generalist, just know that it's it's going to take you a lot longer. Um, like if you're just a general consumer guy, like it's just going to take you a lot longer to rise to the top because you're trying to appeal to the mushy middle who doesn't, they're not really passionate. Um, if, however, 
I've got some great examples of this. Like we had one guy that he's in the Bay Area and he wrote an article and it appeared in, an, uh, I think, a newspaper. And he said that, uh, you know, what he taught, he had a business, he taught man skills. And so he knows who his audience is. He knows who gives him money. And so, and it's, uh, and so he wrote an article and it said, he basically said, why are men such weenies in the Bay Area? Well, it's because all of the women are just ball busters. And as you can imagine, like he, oh, I mean, they were like stalking him. They were, um, what's that term called when they're, they're doxing it? I mean, it was really bad. Like they really went after him hardcore. Um, they just, it, they, oh, it was horrible. But his audience loved it. And his audience are the type that they're, you know, they're trying to be that, you know, kind of that red pill alpha male where they're trying to reclaim their masculinity. So uh, 80% of the audience absolutely hated it. That 80% was never going to give him money, ever. They were never going to follow him. They were never going to engage with him. Uh, and, and so, but that 20%, you know, they're on the fence. They're like, hey, do we like this guy or not? Whoa, he took a big stand. Uh, that resonates with me. I, I need to be a part of this. So your people will become much more passionate and they'll follow you. Um, and uh, it'll be polarizing where, you know, the rest of people are not going to like you. Now, I'll tell you another thing from a media perspective. And that is like when you go to do, let's say a TV segment, you should have a unique point of view that evokes a response of, oh, wow, that's really interesting. I'd never considered that. Like you want that, right? You want to be unique. You want people to be able to say, oh, Carol, Carol's the gal who dot, 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 dot. And she's memorable. Like she, she takes a stand. Like for me, like I never pay retail for any consumables. Like, I, like I'm just crazy about that. And I, you know, I, I was like, listen, if you're not using a coupon and you're not taking advantage of the absolute best sales, you are getting absolutely ripped off. And so, you know, so I, I, I take a stance. Like if you go into TV and you say, well, I'm a World War II historian and you're not going to believe this, but uh, Hitler was a little bit of a jerk. You know, it's like, whoa, wow, way to go out on a limb on <laughs> that one. Mind. Yeah, so, it's, I, 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 you know, but that said, you know, go at your comfort level because, you know, you might not be comfortable with some of the blowback you'll get from people that don't like you. For me, you know, I'm generally a nice, likable guy. My enemy is our PR firms uh, and the old way of, not all PR firms, most people are very, very good. Uh, but what I don't like uh, is, you know, PR firms that are charging their clients thousands and thousands of dollars. And it's just, they're doing the same old crap over and over and over again. And uh, I blew 25 grand on bad PR. I got one good introduction to a reporter and I got to speak at a lawn and garden show. That was my $25,000. So my purpose is to make sure that that never happens again to anybody. And so, yeah, sometimes I take the PR industry to task. And in fact, I have the distinction of having one of the most polarizing presentations ever given at Social Media Marketing World. Uh, I was brought in after my presentation and said, Josh, we had no idea how many PR professionals attend our event. We now know. <laughs> 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 and I said, listen, the social media people and the entrepreneurs, they love you. The <laughs> PR people, they hate you. <laughs> totally. Well, yep. you, knew who your, you knew who your customers were. so it didn't Yeah, matter. right. Absolutely. Yep. So That's much awesome. fun. And I want to jump into the four more because we're, we're running about to, about to that time. But I just love all these examples, how you have proven over and over and over again, just like back in the day where you spent, you spent a total of $500 over the course of this whole experience to get where you are with yeah. something like, what'd you say? You have something close to 100,000 Twitter followers across platforms at, at this point. You have over you know, two, 300 podcast interviews and you are helping people all over the world grow their businesses. And you personally have only had to spend $500 on PR. That just shows yeah. our entrepreneurs out there that there's no reason with some hustle and and some just being willing to consistently go after contacts that they can do the same exact thing. So yeah, excellent, I've excellent heard it thing. said that uh, the founder of Geek Squad said advertising is the tax you pay for being unremarkable. Wow, oh, that's that. wonderful. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to put that in the show notes because that was good. <laughs> that was good, Geek Squad. Not my quote, no, but but yeah, it's it's one that uh, I, I remind myself of 
frequently. So, and what is unremarkable? Un, you know, it's just, that means I haven't given enough or I haven't brought enough value to the marketplace or to other people. And I'm going to keep on giving and serving uh, until, you know, I start to build that and earn that organically. Beautiful. Uh, and one more thing I want to add uh, for anybody listening, and I'm, I'm sure you would agree with this. There's a difference between giving because you think you're supposed to give and giving because you really want to help. And, and the way you approach people and the way you give is going to change based on your, your motivations. And if your motivation is to give just to eventually get a sale, it's not going to generate the same response as if your motivation to yeah. give because you really want to help people. So it really is. It's, it's not just giving. It's the mindset of wanting to help and add value. And, and, and People, give. if you're cynical about this and you're like just checking boxes, Boxes so that you can get that sale. People, are, listen, you you can't fool anybody today. Like it, people are going to feel it. Just you know, and you know, it's it's uh, you know, it, it, and the reason why I know this is because Jay, you're a smart guy. Carol, you're smart. I mean, we, I, you know, I'm smart. Like we're people, and so uh, you know, we know how to read into this, like you can watch a reality TV show and you're like, mm -hmm, yeah, I don't like that person. Why? I don't know. They're just like giving off a vibe. Like you are giving off a vibe. We all have poker tells in yep. business and in sales. And so people can read that. I mean, it's, it's the, it's the, uh, the unconscious subconscious stuff that all gets communicated. People are going to figure it out. So just, you know, try to get your heart right, heart right. And you'll do okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Josh. So now we're going to move into the part of our show where we call four more and we're going to ask you four rapid fire style questions. And then the more is where you're going to tell us more about where to connect with you. Sure. So Jay, I'll actually, I'm going to take the first question. So I want to know, Josh, what was your very first or your very worst job and what lessons did you learn from it? Oh gosh. Well, I'm, I actually worked about 10 to 12 different jobs in, in high school. Like I said, I'm, I'm a pretty bad employee. I worked Burger King. I worked Wendy's. Uh, I was a bus boy. I did all those things. Um, you know, listen, working over a grease, uh, you know, where you're dipping fries into the, into the oil vat, that's pretty bad. Uh, I, I, you know, um, one of my best jobs was I was a roller skating dinosaur. Uh, <laughs> what? and so I DJed at a roller rink and then, uh, every night I'd get to, you know, kind of put the, I'd have somebody else man the booth and I'd go put on a purple dinosaur, just like Barney. I was going to say, is this a generic skates. dinosaur? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was actually before Barney, um, just kind of date myself. Um, so it was, I think it was Borny the dinosaur. I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and so that was, that was a pretty good gig. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, I, but listen, I, I think we all have to pay our do, dues with bad jobs um, and get comfortable with those things um, so that it, it, it toughens us up. That's awesome. Cool. Question number two, what was the defining moment uh, in your life or your career where you realized you had this entrepreneurial itch to go out and do stuff on your own? Seventh grade. Uh, and that was, you know, I would go to the, the, the convenience store and buy, you know, all this candy for like, you know, five, 10 cents a piece. And, uh, and then I would come to school and I'd sell it for 50 cents a piece. And so I'm like, man, that's really good ROI. Now in middle school, uh, I actually got in trouble for that. You weren't supposed <laughs> to do that. And I remember like when we had this orientation for like, okay, you kids are getting older now. You're ready to graduate. You're getting into high school. And I remember they're like, does anybody have any questions? So like out of all the middle school, uh, eighth grade, you know, getting ready to go into freshman, you know, be a freshman. I'm like, can we sell stuff at middle school, like candy and stuff? That was like, that was my question. <laughs> they asked in front of everybody. Uh, and, uh, and I remember the, whoever it was speaking were like, yeah, we don't have a problem with that. I'm like, oh, I'm going to like this. <laughs> I don't know that I, I actually went on and sold candy anymore. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, and, and you, you know, I was in the Navy for five years. I mean, that was a little bit different, but that was still, that's tough. You know, when, when you're at someone else's beck and call and you're going to do it their way, um, I'm an idea person. And, you know, I really, really like to execute when I feel like something, um, you know, fits with what I want to do. 
Cool. So you've been entrepreneuring your whole life, basically. Yeah. I mean, since you were like 10 for crying out loud, getting stuff over at Circle K and reselling mm-hmm. it. <laughs> out, of all, out of all of your adventures along the way, what has been your very worst entrepreneurial moment? Uh, yeah, absolutely. One of my businesses that I started was um, a blog before there was actually such things as blogs. And to go along with that, I had a small town newspaper. And uh, that was a really bad business to start. Uh, but I really wanted to be this, um, you know, th- this spokesperson for this, uh, our, our community. And um, there was a problem though, Carol, I, I, I was afraid of uh, getting advertising and selling advertising because I, I just, I just got in my head over it. And I thought, I'm going to, I'm all, all selling is, is trying to convince someone of something or convince them to do something. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. Uh, but because of that fear, oh, I, that, that was my biggest business blunder right there. Now, my very next uh, uh, business was that uh, I was an independent contractor and I was doing marketing for a, a network of law firms and, and sales and marketing. So I did that for five years really rose to the top in that. And, and I learned a lot. Uh, and that's really, I gained the skills from that work to truly be able to get comfortable with the process of understanding what sales is. Sales is just solving people's problems or finding out, is there a way that I can help you? Uh, and yeah, naturally, if I'm going to give you value, then, you know, I'm going to try and give you more value than money that you give me. But um, you know, it's, it's, it's really an understanding. And, and, and so if you don't quite understand what sales are, uh, is, uh, it, it's going to be tough. I love that. And, and just to reiterate, because you said it, but uh, I think we needed more emphasis on that. Sales is all about giving value. And I, mm-hmm. I think too many people think of it from the opposite side. They think selling is how do I, how do I get something for myself? Mm. And it, it's, it's really, it, it's all about, no. and I'm sorry, not giving value. It's all about solving problems. Yeah, it um, is. And, and, and so think of it from the customer's point of view, what they're getting, not what you're getting. Love it. Um, okay. Uh, fourth question in the four more. What is something you splurged on that was totally worth it? <laughs> I, uh, I I buy a lot of uh, gadgets and uh, I generally upgrade to the latest thing. Um, I'll say that um, probably, you know, I, I buy every streaming service uh, that, that exists. Uh, I just like having access to everything. You know, for me, it's... Um, you know, I, I believe in working really, 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 really hard. Uh, but, you know, my downtime, I schedule that and I take it really, really seriously. It's like, you know, why do mom and dad need to go out on a date and leave the kids behind? It's so we could be a better mom and dad and we can have a better relationship together. Um, I am much more effective at my work when I'm not working 18 hours a day. You know, when I say, listen, I can do 12, but I, I just... You know, once in a while, you know, you have your, you know, you got to put in extra stuff, but I really take my downtime very, very seriously. So I invest in my downtime uh, and, and, and I really try to recharge that way so that, you know, when I have, you know, 10 a.m. the next morning, 9 a.m. the next morning, I can hit it really, really, really hard. That's, that is such a great reminder for our listeners too, right? It's like you're investing so much time in your business, but the concept of investing in your downtime, yeah. that's a big light bulb moment, right? So many people are like, it's my downtime, I'm just going to chill and that's the end of that. But you actually full on make sure you put energy and investment into your downtime so that it can make you yeah. a more productive person and, overall. I think that's huge. And I invest in it. It's like, you know, uh, running, for example, I buy really, really like the best shoes I can buy. Um, and, and because now psychologically, I'm invested in it, I'm going to treat it much more seriously. Uh, oh, okay, I'm a professional casual runner, you know? Right, so, absolutely. Yeah, I don't, I don't try and cheap out on the things that I want to be very passionate about. That makes perfect. That's the place you spend your money, right? You're the mm-hmm. one who's known for not paying retail or, and you probably still don't pay retail for those shoes. I, I know, I know. That no, I, I work it a little bit, but I, <laughs> I'm not about um, being cheap. I'm about saving money on all the things that are, are really like, you don't really care about as much um, so that I can splurge on, you know, maybe it's family vacations or, you know, I really wanted, um, you know, I, I really wanted to have a Lexus. Like I've, I've you know, and I got one. Um, I, I bought it really smart, but still like it, it mattered to me. Like I wanted to have a very comfortable car. And so. Yep. Yeah. Same it's about thing. realizing your priorities and, and 
acting accordingly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so finally, Josh, the more question, where can our audience find out more about what you're doing, more about you and connect with you? You could totally cyber stalk me, copy stuff like, you know, how does Josh do his LinkedIn profile? Uh, how does Josh do a press kit? And just completely steal all my ideas. We never have to connect. I'll never know you were there. Uh, but you can find all of that at upmyinfluence.com. Our YouTube channel is really super valuable. We spend a lot of effort uh, teaching and giving away what everyone else is charging money for. And that's, you'll find that pretty consistent across all of our content. There are lots of great step-by-step -step guides. Two, three, I do three podcasts, The Savings Angel Show, Thoughtful Entrepreneur, and Authority Confidential. Uh, three extremely valuable podcasts, but it would truly be my honor uh, to, to be of service to you. You are just the giver all the way around. I love it. It's just, that's what makes you so amazing and so good at what you do and just an overall good person. And it's just going to keep coming back to you over and over. It's a great cycle. Yeah, Josh, Josh, thank you so much. This has been amazing. You're absolutely incredible. Thanks again. Yeah. Uh, I, I, Carol I love and Jay, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank this, this, you. this show really resonated with me and, and we really appreciate that, that you were here and, and, and helped us and helped our listeners. So Josh, thank you so much. I loved that episode. What'd you think, Carol? Phenomenal. As always, Josh just always just completely brings it. He brought so many actionable tips about how important it is to give, to just give freely. And that positions you as an authority and drives business back to you. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. Like I, like I said at the end there, this show really resonated with me because I know we do a lot of this in our business. We've done this over the last decade of just trying to give back as much as we can. And we've certainly seen the benefits from it. And so I'm sure our listeners will as well. Just amazing tips there from Josh. Agree. Loved it. All right. Let's sign off, darling. All righty. Thank you everybody for listening. She's Carol. I'm Jay. Now go and up your influence today. See you later, everybody. Bye, everybody.